Food Fight. We're doing Food Fight. If you don't know about Food Fight, don't worry. You already have all the context you could possibly need from these, what, 10 seconds of footage? Let's fully get into the terrible Food Fight. Yeah, this is gonna be a fun time. So we come flying on into our supermarket setting as it closes down for the night. Am I supposed to be able to read that? Oh, never mind. It just says market down beneath it. Oh, that clears it up. Just closing up. Nothing much happens around here after dark. Boof. Ugh. What? It's, it's just a JPEG. And so the store closes down. You know, it's like that environment from Sausage Party, but with way dinkier graphics. I've just started learning Unreal Engine. I think this is actually possible for me to make right now. And after we scroll for an ungodly long take, is it really that important to see all 50 aisles? Finally, we reverse back to turn on the lights on all 50 aisles again. The place has come to life at night. It's our world. And so as Sonic sings our main theme, we get to see the wonderful world of Food Fight. I'm trying to resist commenting on it, but my god, look at the visuals! Look at these characters! The lighting, the shadows, my god! For the first time, I had to retry getting the footage right for this movie, because it's so condensed, and it didn't fix it! Look at this! And we haven't even gotten to the animation yet. What is that? Why? There is no context here. Just boring slow bow and then pistol whip speed cartoon physics. And then there's the dialogue from this town. I am so excited to- Uh oh. Hey, that hurt. Oh. Wow. What? That's Mr. Clean back there. And so with our colorful world established, it's time to finally meet our protagonists. I'm giving you one last chance to hand them over before I cash in your coupons for you. <laughs> what an intro! This isn't meant to be parody, but it's so good. So what's going on here is that our boy Dex Dogtective is confronting Fat Cat Burglar atop a hot air balloon surrounded by a hyperactive Kung Fu Mice Minions. And they're really pushing the definition of hyperactive. It is you, the great Dex Dog Detective, who's about to take a fall. Oh no. They got Yao from Mulan into this. And you'll never guess how Dog Detective gets out of this scenario. Hey, hairless hamsters. Want some of this? <laughs> yeah, you should lower your expectations as we continue through this movie. Really lower your expectations. And after more kooky, cartoony hijinks that just do not fit in a format like this, Dog Detective nabs the basket of kittens, oh, that's what this was about, and lands for a journalist interview. Brother, he's not even animating on the swing. This makes 500 consecutive cases you've solved. What's your secret, darling? <laughs> The secrets inside. Ignoring how the mice only now somehow landed, I just realized behind that snout, it's Charlie Sheen. Yeesh, what is going on with this cast of VAs? Well, I say that, it's clear Sheen isn't really putting his all into the performance, though does he ever? The real secret is I am scared out of my mind, Dan. Tonight's the night. M my name's actually Daz, not Dan. It's a common mistake. Oh, never mind. The bird journalist has just turned into this squirrel. This is going to be a thing. This movie is 100% stitched together. It's not exactly finished, if that wasn't obvious already. We'll divulge the production details as we go, but for a starter, this movie was released in 2012, but was originally conceptualized back in 1997. 15 years in the making. Produced by Threshold Entertainment, which is essentially Lawrence Kasanoff's company, same guy who made the old Mortal Kombat movies. These guys also made Heroes Factory, Bionicles, Legend Reborn, Lego The Adventures of Clutch Powers, and Bobbleheads the movie. Yeah, we ain't exactly dealing with a Lord and Miller production here. Not to mention, Kasanoff really wanted to direct it, despite having no experience in the animation field whatsoever. Anyway, Dog Tech Div is nervous because he's prepping to propose. What if she doesn't like it? Relax, bro. We're talking about sunshine goodness. This is Wayne Brady. Look at what they did to Wayne Brady. Oh my lord, it gets worse. Here's Hilary Duff. She looks 14. And is our love interest. Oof. Hilary Duff was 25 at this time, and Charlie Sheen was 47. 
Ugh. Not to mention, she comes flying in playing football with a bunch of deformed animated kids, playing with a watermelon PNG that's not even layered to be behind the kids in the foreground. This is the movie that just keeps on giving. And it's such a shame I'm gonna have to start skimming because this video is already longer than how long into the movie we are. You want some? Oh yeah. <laughs> Never feed a dog raisins. They will die. It is literally poison to the- This movie's gonna be hard to skim. And so the couple go on that date for the proposal before it's ruined by Daredevil Dan crashing his plane like he supposedly does every day. And then she goes off to help Dan. We teleport to Dan. Detective is here and he says... Just that was hours ago. Huh? The sky looks the exact same. Six months later... Okay. What? May I help you? You must be Leonard. What the fuck? What did I tell you? Lower your expectations. You've never seen Christopher Lloyd like this. Why does he move like that? Why is his head so ginormous? Oh, I'll make space. Wh why? Just why? Who said this was a good idea? Who wrote this dialogue? Who told Christopher Lloyd to gargle on a rock while speaking? I mean, he's putting it as all, but... Wait until you get up. <laughs> Whiff of a brand X elixir. But anyway, cursed inspector aside, he adds brand X to the inventory and the bag of chips start talking. Brand X will pay. Arr. No, it's because it's a literal pirate character. Okay. Okay, Brandon, that was a nice draft. Now try saying the line for real this next time, okay? So back to Dogtective, and he's now depressed, being unable to solve the one case that mattered the most. Daredevil Dan remains unfazed that their friend is gone. Oh, Mama Sita! Oh, nice packaging! Keeping it classy. Wait a minute, isn't this aimed to be a kid's movie? I mean, I certainly hope so with some of the cartoony gags we've seen. This is incredibly full on, and it just keeps going. How about some chocolate frosting? I like to butter your muffin. This is not only terrible filmmaking, this is borderline offensive. Plus, the VA was Hilary Duff's little sister, who's barely 19 at this point. Just teaching kids how to cackle and care little about your missing friends. So then, I don't understand this movie, Daredevil Dan goes on to crash his plane again, going into a building that then opens up to an open field? And then after an elongated display of trying to fix his crash, come on, it's been six more months, dude, do you really need that book? He eventually gives up and crashes into the gnome tree. I'm good! I'm cool! Let me see. <laughs> Hold on, was that intentional? That's the real cut of the movie. What was the point of the last camera motion? I feel like they had a leftover keyframe that just started before the cut. And I wouldn't be surprised, because the final result of this movie is the definition of rushed. See, Food Fight was originally intended to be a Christmas 2003 movie, so I guess I timed this upload well, just 19 years later. But it very much had a troubled and delayed production. Starting with in December of 2002, the director Kasanoff reported that hard drives containing assets for the movie had been stolen in an act he described as industrial espionage and an incredibly complex crime. Whoa. Although phrasing it like some overcomplicated crime sure does make it sound suspicious. Real politicianisms in there. So there was an investigation done which included the United States Secret Service and they could not find the thief. Fast forward to 10 years later and a Reddit user comes out to claim that they weren't stolen but intentionally deleted by the director. I don't really know if you can trust a random Reddit source but they're consistent and I think that just makes the backstory that much more funny. They say the hard drives were a server room behind a giant locked door that logs when it's opened and by whom, also making claims that the movie was never intended to be released and was just a scam to get money from investors, saying Kasanov burned down his mansion for motion capture research and claiming insurance payouts. Woof. You don't appear to have the correct coupons for such a pricey purchase. Oh, oh no. I didn't lower my expectations enough. This is abhorrent. Meet Cheezel T. Weasel. Fun fact, he's voiced by director Kasanoff. Not so fast, Mr. Detective. Oh, uh, no, please stop. Just stop. Just when you think the animation style couldn't get any weirder. And I'm not entirely sure what Cheezel is going for. The dialogue in general is hard to pass sometimes. And he mentions giving Dog Detective a companion, but does he mean him or the merchant? What is that? You don't think it is... 
Oh no. And why does Weasel look like that? What is this disgusting texture on him? And then the scene ends with him stepping on random tracks and getting hit by a train. Okay. Okay. So now Dogtective comes to some sort of gala event. Yeah. I feel about the same internally. I mean, look at the humor that surrounds us in this world. Oh, I'm so excited. Look at the table. I'm stuck in the mud. It's so disgusting. Oh. And I mean, Jesus, I've never seen a dance floor so intense. Everyone's got the same two jumping moves. What is that? Why is Mr. Clean back? Better go easy on the potato juice before you get chip faced. Kids movie, everyone. Just reminding you. Kids movie. And as Daredevil Dan also teleports into the room, he exposites about the new appearance of Lady X, presumably from the Brand X from earlier. And though already the child seemed a little sexualized in design, Lady X takes it full on, with every boy in the house hounding towards her. Movie just going full crass at this point, if it wasn't already. Of all the produce bars and all the supermarkets and all the world, she had to walk into mine. What? Why are you speaking like that now, you weirdo? And so she knows about Dog Detective already and seemingly trying to flirt. That scent, something familiar. My secret ingredient. You like it? And then just like that, that's all the plot we're gonna get this scene as Daredevil Dan and Captain Crispy go on to fight over Lady X, which then divulges into. <laughs> Well, I mean, I was supposed to be expecting this kind of moment, though not necessarily 20 minutes into a 90 minute movie, but we'll take it. And it is just bonkers. Whilst also kind of boring. It's just like four different fighting gags the writers could come up with alongside more cringy dialogue, like... <laughs> I'd almost want to say it seems like they were having fun making this moment, but after hearing all sorts of contexts, I'm not really sure if it's all that true. Until eventually, Dog Detective is having none of it. He drop kicks Captain Krusty across the bar and shouts, Party's over. Time to banana split out of my club. Uh, and that's that then. Wait, so this is Dog Detective's party? I thought Captain Krusty was hosting it because he's the one with the stamped on crisps. And so then why was Detective so surprised that Lady X showed up at his place if he has such a high value venue? What? What even is Dog Detective's brand anyway? What can I say? Chicks dig chocolate. What are you doing, Kasanoff? What is this doing in a kid's movie like this? Whose idea was it to put more sexual innuendos in this movie than plotline? And Dog Detective drinks his sorrows away. Crying over spilt milk. Oh, she's back again. Was there meant to be a scene in the middle of all this, or? I'm looking for a guy. About your height. Same great build. Okay, guys, this is going too far. Maybe this movie really wasn't intended to be seen by anyone. The whole shtick that got this movie started was $25 million from a joint investment put in by Threshold and Natural Image, a Korean investment company. They then expected more budget to come in from loans and foreign pre-sales, so when it was announced that the movie was to release in 2005 and was missed, it became a hurdle to keep investors on board. And even worse, when 2007 rolled around and another deadline was missed. Add on to that previous hard drive issues and things were seemingly going in circles. Apparently the style of animation was originally intended to be all squash and stretch like Looney Tunes cartoons, but when production resumed in 2004 post that hard drive's event, the style changed to motion capture, as apparently the director and animators were speaking in two different languages. The end result was this weird combination of styles we have. Simultaneously a lot of work and also cutting many corners. Maybe I can help you get a clean start on a new relationship. What is this movie? Why are we here? So as this flirtatious dance continues, Dog Detective keeps rejecting her advances until slowly he seems to get on board before... Wait! I haven't shown you my secret ingredient. The secret's inside. All right then, I guess we'll move on. So what was that Yelp all about? This guy, head of defense after Dog Detective, who's now found several dead bodies laid out in the street. It's a mystery. This took me a second watch to understand what was happening, not gonna lie, it's vague. The salts and sugars they all are, poised as if they were at war. How many Ikes went down? Everybody we threw out of the friggin' banana. Dan and Lady X is the only ones missing. Did you get that? 
Everyone at the party is dead, except Lady X and Daredevil Dan. And Lady X has an alibi. Do they address why she suddenly dresses a schoolgirl? Anyway, exposition time. We all know when a product loses its icon, it spurls, it goes bad. If you wash the box of the product, I guess they go bad? Dead? Or evil? Either way, considering Lady X here literally just said, I can wash away your memories. I wonder who the villain is. And Dog Detective immediately gets it as a pre-planned ruse as Rigor Moldus has set in. Looks like all these poor Ikes were rubbed out. Meanwhile, in the real world, here's how the shelves look. Splattered only with Product X. Surely there's a process when it comes to retail shelving, you know? You know, Petty Falou pays a lot of extra money to be on the end of the aisle where I'm never looking. It's not where I expect to find products I'm after. Anyway, surely with this much destruction, the whole town should be rubbed off and the buildings collapse. No? No. <sighs> Welcome to halfway through this video. If you're liking it so far and want more terrible, subscribe or become a member to get extra perks like next episode's video now. I'm also planning to do some casual streams over on our second channel, Daz Reviews 2, in January. So if you want to hang out, come join me there. And so Dog Detective puts back on his detective gear to help save Daredevil Dan and clear his name. And at the same time, Product X is more prevalent now. Not anymore. Lady X is strolling into what I assume is like the town hall with her newfound generals. Jeez, I wonder if these are the bad guys or not. Where she now claims that... Brand X is 30 strong now. And so they will maintain order in the aisles. As in government or crime protection. What am I to understand here? Everyone's in uproar. And as for Dog Detective... Oh, we'll take care of him too. Right. And then in the very next scene, Lieutenant X here is pushing Cheezle T Weasel off a rooftop. No context needed, demanding for details over Dog Detective, which he gives and is then killed for. I fear this will not end happily for me. You know, maybe I'm on the bad guy's side. This is the literal director speaking, and the delivery is so poorly directed. And thus, Cheezle T Weasel is dead. Everybody seems to be searching for the flying squirrel. Mayhaps a reward for the reckless rodent? Oh, never mind. Is this seriously meant to be the same street? And also, Lieutenant X was just asking about Dog Detective's whereabouts, not Daredevil Dan. Regardless, Dog Detective chokes the information out of him about Dan leaving after the screams on the road. Dog Detective disagrees, and we move on. Not to self. Need no friends. You know? I almost laughed at this joke. If only he never finished his sentence. Just note to self. And then never speaks again. Anyway, Dog Detective now goes to climb the Product X Tower and is immediately there to be greeted by Lady X again. Boy, they really get to the point, eh? I feel like I keep seeing the same characters on loop this is so fast. Sorry I'm not dressed. I wasn't expecting company. It's been 30 minutes and she already has three different skin type models. Also some pretty stark Nazi imagery going on with these X logos. Really pushing the boundaries for mature content in a kid's project. Don't get me wrong, I think there's a good debate behind highlighting Nazism for educational purposes so we never downplay or forget, but here... I don't know. How about joining me in a warm rinse? You know, I think I'm getting used to this bonkers style. Each leap is getting less and less surprising. And so they tango together between a collection of falling weaponry. I can see her entire ass cheek animators. Oh, but being filthy can be loads of fun. I want to scrub your bubbles, Dex. That one fish isn't shook. What, have they already seen this arrangement? Well, they're all dead now. Until finally, after many kicks, we come to our peace. Your crash dummy's fine. For now. But he won't be unless you back Brand X. That's what it's all about, of course. Supporting them at the town hall. And as Dog Detective continues to reject her and the idea of being lovers who will own this supermarket, she knocks him out, no issue. We could have been like macaroni and cheese, scotch and tape. Well, they certainly know what kind of character they've created. The step is entirely intentional. I was a kid in 2012. And even more so in 2003. Oh, it gives me the ick to think this would have been aimed at me at the time. And so Dog Detective ends up where Daredevil Dan is, in some sort of X-themed oven? Yikes. Oh, and look, she's got another skin-tied outfit. Is this where all the budget went? It certainly wasn't on those footballer kids. Frame everybody, from calories to carbs. Then Brand X will step in and replace them all. 
I still don't entirely understand how you can tell who's a sugar and who's a salt, who's a calorie and who's a carb, because I can't see where their products are. It's not established. But evildoers have their evil deeds in motion. And so that oven from before? It's a washing machine. And the fire is just a 2D texture. Only the best set pieces for food fight. Socks always escape from the dryer. Follow that sock. And that's all it took. Just running completely upside down, it's fine. They spot evil deeds through the window and now they're on the case. They're building an entire army of robotic exobites. What's an exobite? How do they know what that's called? Oh, what the hell? What is going on? We need you to analyze this. Bloody hell, what is going on now? Who is this unestablished character? And when did they grab Lady X's perfume? This is unfinished. Yeah, that's exactly it. Remember how I said they missed a deadline in 2007 as well as 2005? Well, by 2011, people had had enough, and the film's entire assets had been put up for auction in an attempt to make any money out of this project. So it sold for $2.5 million. See, investors who had pumped in tens of millions of dollars into this project invoked a legal clause from their contract that allows the Fireman's Fund Insurance Company to step in. Now, these guys insured Food Fight, and so they were brought in to complete and release the film as inexpensively and quickly as possible. Of course, the end result of that is scenes that don't match up 100%, but you can get the gist. As animator Ken Bailey put it, the film was already ruined, they were just trying to salvage what they could. I've also seen some people blame the poor texturing on that too, or the fact that everything was stolen. But remember, by now, that was nine years ago, in 2002. You're the only one with a nose for the job. <laughs> Maybe it was always doomed from the start. So they learn that Product X is addictive and they need to tell the real life store owner by email. On the other side of the warehouse in the middle of the day. You know, I kind of see what they were going for, bit of a sausage party, Wreck-It Ralph thing, but I can't even pass what product placement each character is meant to represent, let alone understand how they interact with the real world. We'll be killed! But not that I can't handle that, because I can, because I'm a natural ninja. Plus, 80% of this movie is stupid fluff like this. It works as improv on whose line is it anyway, it doesn't work on film. Oh right, so at daytime, everything literally vanishes off into boxes and products, I see, and you can just... Will yourself into existence? Let's strawberry jam out of here. Ah! Oh no. Oh no. The animation has actually gotten worse. I didn't think it was possible. Look at that baby. And I can't tell. I think this is supposed to be a chase sequence. Daredevil is flung around shopping trolleys. The Nazi lunch lady is there. Dog Detective rides in on a Coke bottle and flies out of there. This has gone from a 0 out of 10 to a minus 1 out of 10. It is impressive! <laughs> mayday! Mayday! Uh, oh, is that how it works now? And they bought a branded bottle with them into the fantasy world? This movie makes so little consistent sense. But it's an opportunity for Dog Detective to tell Penguin Friend here all the exposition and to round everyone up to the banana gala as he flies overhead. You need to warn the other Reichs, Brand X is behind the rub out. What was that? Can you say all that again? I was, I was distracted. The store is now closed. We're gonna make it. Thanks Joe Biden for the supermarket announcement there. Didn't realize every landscape was a thin strip between each aisle you could just blast through. And soon enough, we end up in Head Guy's office, somehow unnoticed. And it's fantasy land again, with this flying vampire Ike that survived the poisoning because he's undead. All right. How can I help? Upload? Download? Every minute it feels like I'm bombarded with something new I just have to accept and roll with. The villains, meanwhile, glue them into the room, trapping them. And as Pilot and Bat whack into walls for a while, Detective learns that Sunshine Goodness Raisins were recalled through foul play and sends for Brand X to be recalled. That's... Brand X must have killed the power. But, but the email went through, right? Maybe. And so our 45 minute film now has to double in size. Also, they say they can't be saved by headquarters now and survive the night, but who is headquarters? The owner? He's gone for the night anyway. No one cares, only me. I'll shut up now. So what do we do now? Fight. 
And so, Lady X decrees that all undesirables will be sent to the expiration station and randomly picks on some ice. As Penguin Friend brings in a collection to the Copa Banana as instructed. Dex Dog Tactive has been discontinued. I shoot less at you, you big weenie like loser. Why does he sound like he's talking out of a radio box suddenly? Anyway, Dog Tactive rocks up and has everyone dance the national theme of products. Alright. I gotta hand it to them. This movie certainly isn't predictable. We will return to pulverize you all. Pulverizing! They were defeated by the power of song. And so a war is brewing. The Nazis have three groups of armies and Dog Detective is giving a pep talk to the resistance. Remember our oath to protect and serve. Uh, I thought I was a can of spaghetti, not a US police officer. And so our war begins, with the armies animated like that, because of course they are. As Dog Detective whips out a box of recalled sunshine goodness, and... FOOD! FIGHT! Oh, okay. So they basically do a worse version of Shrek 2, bombarding the villains with doofy liquid simulators. Again, and again, and again. Every character throws, every explosion shown, just a ungodly amount of gluey goo. And they retreat. And then they do it some more. Explosions, pies, rain, goo. And that's how that goes. I don't know what I was expecting, to be honest, but I see I've forgotten our one rule. Lower your expectations. But it's not over yet, as Brandex has a second wave. And now it's the resistance being bombarded. The guys are bombarded and these guys are bombarded. The ketchup machine readies themselves like artillery. What is that ketchup made of? Because it causes actual fiery explosions on the crew. They've got rockets that only cause plumes of smoke. The whipped cream is weaker than ketchup. Exobites fly! Okay, this is just inappropriate. I can almost give one point for the small creativity of some of these weapons, but this shot is taking it too far. What kind of parent would expose their kid to this? By the way, guess how much this movie made off of its 45 to 64 million dollar budget? Well, in the first week from its limited release in the UK, 15. Thousand. Oof. So for those of you who couldn't visually read that, Daredevil Dan got into a plane, started blowing a bubblegum bubble, then did an aileron roll through the Hornets to explode most of them into sticky gum. Just like that. Yeah, I'll have whatever the hell he was chewing, please. Thanks. So then Brandex start just outright bombing the streets with people on them. I I is that a product? I, I can't see it. Food goes right to my butt. Ah, thanks, movie. Always sneaking in a bit of time to confirm how in the dirt the writing is. It would appear you are in need of a professional. Oh, no. Not this guy again. I thought he died. Why are you back, Kassanoff? Not to self. New friends not working out. Ugh. <sighs> And so our Breath of the Wild champions stand atop rooftops, formulating tin foil items everywhere. Then the frog gets captured off screen and they go to slice off his tongue. Oh, okay, this would legit terrify me as a kid. Who is this for? Life coming, push. Enough! I don't like her. She's very mean. You know, Sonic Adventure 1 came out in 1998. Haven't we learned enough from Big the Cat's voice? Even in a torture scene, this character has no emotional depth or ability to not massively ruin the intensity of the scene. I don't like her, she's very mean. Ugh. And so the town continues to be bombed. Not even sure what by at this point, as Penguin Friend is killed, I think. No! Point of contact there? And then the Nazi is immediately remorseful. Wait! It wasn't my fault! I was just following orders! I don't even like her! Yikes! That is literally the defense Holocaust guards made. Is that the reference? I hope it's just a coincidence because the alternative is... And so we pause at the Copa Banana. Long live la resistance. Come on. As Penguin Friend 2 is put to rest. Nose Guy shouts and backflips over the place saying the poison is bad. And then Vampire Bat Guy. 
I'm fine. Nobody saw that. <sighs> All the lightning rods are in place. I guarantee it. Well, he just suddenly had an accident at the studio. His voice quality drops from normal mic to webcam mic. And so, Dog Detective discovers the Exobites are refueling their poison at the Brand X Tower. And though Daredevil Dan doesn't want to fly because it's a suicide mission, Dog Detective then goes on to awkwardly hallucinate a feathered oval to the scene from before of sunshine goodness to inspire him to tread forwards. I can see the plot point, but the execution is just laughable. Ironically, unlike anything else in this movie. I just gave up. I let you all down. I mean, really, they're literally in the middle of nowhere during a bomb raid and they're just monologuing. Come on. <laughs> Never mind, can we go back to the monologuing, please? Cheesel T Weasel chainsaws down a power line and kills Lunch Lady X. Okay. Cheesel T Weasel rocks. Is it bad I kind of enjoy the weird bassy soundtrack under his scenes? What is wrong with me? So, what's the plan with the tinfoil before? We pull lightning rods on all our buildings to keep them safe. Brand X don't have lightning rods, so it gets destroyed. So then why are we witnessing every other building getting destroyed as well? How does a single power line cause an electrical storm? Should you really be parachuting in the sky when you've orchestrated nature to zap everywhere? The regular Benjamin Franklin. Yeah, uh, who's Benjamin Franklin? Benjamin Franklin. Okay, skip. Why are you gonna constantly pepper your movie with crap like this? So, Dog Detective lands at the lair, immediately exploding several exobites that for some reason weren't already in the sky, as we next see him immediately finding sunshine. Sunshine. Dex! At this point, characters are just teleporting onto the scene. Who cares where they were before? You cold farted itch. Really? I mean, I guess it's established they're not above this, but it still surprises me every time. And so, Sunshine is about to be poisoned directly and mutilated to be something... bad, but they stop, because a random bolt of lightning completely identical to all the past ones now makes everyone rock around like it's a Star Trek episode. And Lady X gets out of there for no real reason. Okay then. I'll just leave you to it. And what's that saving grace move Dog Detective has up his sleeve to beat this suddenly equal circumstance, do you think? <laughs> oh, of course. And just like that, Dog Detective dives out for a raisin sunshine, spits it at the injection gun, and hits Lieutenant X. I think I just wet myself. It feels rather nice. <laughs> <sighs> Sunshine goodness is saved, we don't address where she was hidden for six months, and they say all sorts of lines that just gotta make you cringe with their dynamic. My world is whole again, kitten. My big tough guy. And we exposite some more about how Brand X took her goodness and sweetness as the special ingredient, taking away her essence even though she's exactly the same, just occasionally weaker than knees or something, and they're shaken out of the room. When did that happen? Gee, this is extreme! As long as I'm with you, nothing else matters. Well, thank you for that progressive lesson, Lizzie McGuire. And to finish our beats, Daredevil Dan has to do one final loop-de-loop -loop that always caused a crash in the past, even though he didn't really need to do that. Everything explodes, and it's over! Woo! But our film isn't quite over yet, there's still seven more minutes, cause cursed Christopher Lloyd is somehow in the fantasy product land. I understand! Uh, somebody ordered a recall! How does this work? How does Dog Detective expect to not get crushed by the human? I'll be fine. Have to be to make sure nothing bad ever happens to you. Why does this guy always have to be so creepy? I'll stomp you into oblivion. You know, I think the biggest tragedy is the fact that Christopher Lloyd was all roped into this. I mean, this guy's a treasure, and he is really getting into it as a voice actor. Like, he is good. Wait until you get a whiff of a brand X elixir. It's just such a shame he's been scrambled into this cursed version of a character. He's killing it, though. And just like that... They trip him over and... Oh my god! What a twist! 
Christopher Lloyd was a sexy lady all along. So you built yourself a human robot and recalled Sunshine, then you stole her essence to make your elixir for Brand X. Thanks, Charlie Sheen, for the full summary there. To be fair, most dialogue is hard to understand, so it's genuinely kind of helpful. How did you get in and out of the store? Okay, hold on. What's going on at this point? What, you still had some animation left over from the motion capture and felt you just had to jam it in somewhere? What is with these random twirls mid-sentence? But enough about me. Let's kill you! <laughs> what a line. And so it's hand-to-hand -hand combat. No one else intervenes and only watches as- Whoa, who's that Ike? Have we seen this super mutant muscle man before? I thought I was done with cursed models. Anyway, the bashing continues. Tell me something. Uh, are those melons real? They throw out all the inappropriate jokes they can at the poor kids still locked down watching this movie. It won't hit her. Not now, not never. But I will. And for plot reasons, she just absolutely destroys Lady X. Power for no reason. She's barely putting up a fight. And then... Sunshine Chip slapped her back to ugly. Gross. And so the lesson is... Don't be ugly, kids. Look up to older creepy men as your only goal. Catcalling is A-OK. -okay, and fart jokes are always funny. She's put to the expiration station. None of the other Ikes are saved from said station. But a simple antidote spray brings everyone back from death. The secret is inside. Inside all of us. <laughs> and Dog Detective finally proposes to Sunshine Goodness. Will you marry me? <laughs> are you kidding me? No! Get me off of these cursed lands! Have you seen what's on the other frame? <laughs> and that was the terrible food fight. Understandably titled the worst animated movie of all time. Apparently the US distributors Viva Pictures managed to turn around a profit for this movie by delaying the release for a better window at Walmart. Only the classiest delivery for a film such as this. There was a bit of extra controversy over aiming product placement at children but I still could barely tell who was what. Director Kasanov said it wasn't immoral because they weren't paid for the placements. But then when on to expect cross-promotion from all of the brands anyway. Nice one, Chief. This movie is an absolute treasure trove of trash, and at its core, it feels even a little black-hearted, so I'm glad it's finally behind me. That was the longest 81 minutes of my life. Thanks, Starmies and whoever you were for suggesting this abomination. For now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit.